let's talk about serpents. As well as the Sumerian god Zenki, Enlil, and their father Anu. These Anunnaki gods equate to Yahweh, whose character is represented by both Enki and Enlil, and their father Anu who is represented by El Elyon the God Most High. The entire world has recognized if not venerated the serpent for its wisdom. Why snakes? They are clever, they have an ability to survive in the harshest of environments, and again, their shape resembling the flow of energy up the spine, to the crown chakra, and the third eye. The snake sheds its skin and is reborn. And perhaps it naturally instilled a bit of caution or awe in people. The Nagas of India were the serpent gods and goddesses. In the Americas there was Quetzalcoatl the feathered serpent. So, was Enki, the good guy of the Sumerian Parthian a snake? Not literally. He has many different appearances. The serpent always represents spiritual wisdom, life, and healing. The first symbols of serpents were attributed to Enki and then to his sister Ninkor Sog, the co-creator. However, the story of the serpent becoming an evil symbol began with the wars between Enki and his brother, Enlil. These conflicts began at birth and had to do with birthright to the royal throne of the Nibiru civilization in which their father, Anu, was the leader and father to many sons. This story later was reflected in Cain and Abel, as well as other stories throughout our times of brothers competing for power, favoritism, and inheritance. Enlil's anger with Enki caused him to twist the truth around to make the serpent evil, which later became what you know as the story in the Bible. What you think of as being Satan is not that at all, but the reverse. Enki was the one who nurtured humanity and his brother Enlil was the vengeful brother who wanted to destroy it. Although there was love between Enki and Enlil, they often did not see eye to eye on many issues, especially when it came to supporting human beings. Enlil never had patience or compassion for people, and on several occasions, such as Sodom and Gomorrah he literally nuked them out of existence. He attempted this again during the time of the Great Flood but Enki, and those who supported him, took swift action to alert all the Noahs around the planet of the forthcoming dangers. Some of the Anunnaki were outraged with Enki for doing so, however Anu supported saving humanity. In the Garden of Eden situation, Enlil was furious that Enki permitted humans to have access to knowledge, the mixing of the Anunnaki with human genes, thereby becoming more godly, and equal to the Anunnaki. To strike back at Enki, and in the attempt to regain his power over humans, Enlil vowed to tarnish Enki's reputation by spreading the idea that the Serpent of Wisdom was evil. However, Enlil was not completely successful because most of Enki's plan had worked. They were formed to be gardeners, and caretakers of the earth, not the owners. Humans are here to maintain beauty, harmony and balance that was first given to us after the earth was created. We are not to be interested only in ourselves. So, why did Adam eat from the tree of knowledge and not from the tree of life? Without getting into complex detail, Enki said simply, with the tree of knowledge humans had the chance to figure out everything on their own in time, to be equal to the Anunnaki. Had they eaten only from the tree of life, they would live but not have been more the wiser. Enki knew that had Adam eaten from the other tree, it would not ensure wisdom or spiritual evolution. Instead, it would more likely result in primitive human living three ends without the knowledge to evolve. The serpent, for the Hebrews actually represented salvation and wisdom. Moses's copper serpent staff, often utilized by his brother, Aaron, was made famous for performing miracles. Another connection between the staff and the serpents occurred during the Exodus when the staff was seen to transform into snakes. Aaron was high priest and had been trained in magic. Isn't it interesting that during the Exodus period, the name Jehovah or Yah, we took over and the Father God basically disappeared? Luckily, the heritage of the Caduceus lived on. 
In some versions the staff is capped with a solar disc or even a crescent moon. One of Enki's daughters, also held a similar staff topped with an ankh. Throughout time different civilizations in India, the Americas, Greece, Egypt, including the great mystery schools and secret societies have renamed and used it. In Christianity the Archangel Michael was associated with this staff. The symbol of the Caduceus was later transferred to one of Enki's counterparts, Thoth, the healing god, and then to others of his family because it was a code for the bloodline of Enki's heritage. You will see a version of the Caduceus as the winged solar disk in ancient Egypt, which incorporated the knowledge of one's divinity and eternal soul, in the third eye chakra, along with the traditional knowledge of what it stood for. Therefore, you see this symbol above arches and entrances into temples and royal structures to remind those who enter who they really are. The symbol of the winged Isis represents the original female mother goddess, and the blood connection in birthing humans who mated with the gods. And this means not only the DNA connection to the Anunnaki, but the soul coming from them as well. Some, perhaps inspired by Theosophical Society founder Helena Blavatsky's book The Secret Doctrine, assert that the Anunnaki are and were a reptilian race that survives to this day, deeply entrenched in human affairs. David Icke believes the imposter Anunnaki gods continue to manipulate humanity from seats of political, corporate, and financial power worldwide. He explains that these beings not only exploit humans but feed off collective fear. Icke calls for a disconnect from mainstream media and Orwellian entertainment that triggers fear and anxiety, an aggregate hypnotic state. Many share their views. On the surface, the Anunnaki narrative appears to be a completely unbelievable hypothesis. But follow the breadcrumbs for a fascinating story reaching from ancient times to modern, and draw your own conclusions.